Good morning, guys. So today I wanted to kind of talk to you about this huge trip that Kevin and I are taking uh, in a week. Um, I've been posting a lot about it on Facebook. I think I think I might have mentioned it in one of my other videos, but I don't really remember. Um, but I am so excited and so nervous and so scared. Um, next week, uh, we're leaving Saturday. Um, Kevin and I are heading down to Kentucky. So we're making, I think it's a 13 hour trip. Maybe it's nine. I don't know. It's either nine or 13 hours. Um, down to Louisville, Kentucky to do a, an all night paranormal investigation of Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Now, for those of you that don't know what Waverly Hills is, I'm going to try to remember to put a link in the description below. Um, but the majority of people know Waverly Hills. It was a giant uh, tuberculosis hospital in the 1920s. Um, and it stayed open until the 1960s when there was a cure, an antibiotic found for tuberculosis. Um, and it's basically in the United States, there's a few areas and Waverly Hills is one of the ghost hunting meccas in the United States. If you are a ghost hunter of any kind, you've either been there, you're going there, or it is your dream to go there. And I have wanted to go to Waverly for years. I mean, it, it has just been my dream. That and Alcatraz have been the two places that I have just wanted to go more than anything. And once this opportunity presented itself, um, here in Michigan, there's two authors, Kat and Bev, <clears throat> that do, uh, it's, it's the, the Michigan Haunted Travels books every year. And they do, for Michigan residents, um, a yearly ghost hunt where they go one place out of state and then they do a couple different places in state. And I had just found out about this uh, this year, early this year, and when I, I was kind of looking online for places to go and do investigating because we got into our LTB paranormal, and I found out they were going to Waverly. And so I was like, I don't care how much it costs. I, I don't care. We have to go. Like, this is... This is the opportunity of a lifetime to go to a place like this and for eight hours. We're going to be in the building for eight hours and I am just, oh my god, I am so excited. But but at night when I think about it, I can't sleep because I'm scared shitless. <laughs> I'm really scared as well. The closer it gets, the more the more nervous I'm getting. Um, but anyway, a little bit, a little history about the place. Uh, like I said, Waverly Hills, um, well, it, it was purchased by Major Thomas Hayes back in the late 1800s, and he built a school there for his daughters, and um, he ended up, one of the, one of the uh, teachers that worked there um, ended up calling it, calling one of the novels or something she was doing Waverly. Um, so they called it Waverly School, and so the, the land that he purchased to build the school he called uh, Waverly Hill. And so that's where that came from. And then the land was purchased from him in the late 1900s to build um, a tuberculosis hospital. It started off as a two-story building that could house uh, 40 to 50 people. And at the time, tuberculosis was this horrible, horrible pandemic where basically once you had it, you were screwed. I mean, that's a terrible way to put it, but there was no cure for it. So you were sent to Waverly, and basically you were sent there to die. Um, after they realized the need for a tuberculosis hospital, they closed down the small two-story building, reopened it into this giant winged building that you'll see now, um, if you click on, I'll, like I said, I'm going to try to put links below. Um, look for a link below that says, like, Waverly picture. And that's a picture of what the building looks like. Um, 
but <sighs> okay so they reopened it in the late 1920s to be a giant five-story uh, building for tuberculosis and that one housed anywhere from four to five hundred people and I mean basically Waverly was its I mean it was its own city it had its own zip code they grew their own crops they slaughtered their own animals for meat uh, they had their own zip code their own water treatment plant um, I mean if you were a resident of Waverly that that is what you were you were a resident like you lived and died there um, you know if you were in the outside world and you came down with tuberculosis you were sent to Waverly and you you pretty much knew going in that you weren't going to come out um, and so there was actually a point in time where so many people were dying from this disease that or this this, this virus um, that it people would die a person a minute at Waverly and so people were constantly coming in and going out um, and so in order to keep morale up like I said it's a five-story building in the basement there's the morgue and they had something called the death tunnel um, or the body chute and it's this 500 foot tunnel in which uh, they would they would roll the bodies down when you died they would take the bodies down this tunnel and then outside to a hearse waiting below to take the body into town because they didn't want people seeing how fast their you know other patients were dying they didn't want to, people to lose hope and, and morale to decrease um, so that's another place in Waverly that a lot of people go to is it's, it's the death tunnel it's right it's right off of the morgue um, and I mean so in the 1960s it was it was shut down because there was a cure it was um, you know an, a, um, oh I totally lost it but uh, there was a cure found um, to actually full-on cure the disease so it was given to the patients that were left the place was closed down and quarantined and then it was reopened for uh, like a, another medical center, but that was closed down by the state in 1980s. So then it was purchased uh, by Tina and Charlie Mattingly, who currently own the building, and I'm really hoping that I'm, my guess is we're going to be able to meet them once we get there, um, because they they rent the building out for ghost hunting. Um, they also do daytime tours, which is another thing. Uh, originally, we were just doing the the investigation at night it's it's from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Um, but then they sent out an email saying hey you know for an extra 25 bucks you can have a daytime tour and that starts at 2 it's like a, a two-hour tour and I really wanted to do that because I don't want to go down to a building like this with so much sadness and so much heaviness without hearing more about the actual history without the ghosts you know, I want to go down there with the, the utmost respect. So, um, we're leaving Saturday, the 21st. Um, and we're leaving probably bright and early Saturday morning because it's going to take us a while to get there. We're staying in a hotel. Um, so, Sunday afternoon at 2 is the uh, daytime tour. And then the nighttime tour starts at 8. Uh, there's four hours from 8 to midnight in which... Because uh, there's 40 people going, so they're breaking us into groups of 10, like 8 to 10 people. And they're going to put each of us on a floor, and you have like 45 to 50 minutes on each floor with your group. So you can do whatever you like, you can, you know, bring whatever equipment you want. I can't bring my spirit box because of how loud it is, but you can bring your cameras, your, um, your uh, digital recorders for EVPs bring a camera I said camera but I meant digital cameras um, you can bring all that stuff and so you've got four hours with a group of people then you come out kind of hang out for a little bit get eat go to the bathroom if you want to leave at that point you're you're done you can go or you can stay and from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. you get to go back in the building by either by yourself or with whoever you came with so like 
Kevin and I are going together. So for an additional three hours, we get to go in and explore the building by ourselves. Um, hey, hey, hey! Cut it out! My cats are so fucking stupid. Ugh. It's like whenever I try to do a video, they act like a bunch of retards, and then I'm just sitting here doing stuff, and they're just like lounging around like it's no big deal. Ugh. Okay, sorry. So anyways... Uh, so then we get three hours to go in all by ourselves, and Kevin is super excited to go back to the, uh, the death tunnel. I am not so excited to go to, to go there. Uh, there's a lot of different places that, like, there's room 502 on the fifth floor in which they say that a nurse committed suicide because she, uh, she was with child, and at that point in time, if you were with child and you weren't married, you were basically shunned by society, and it was rumored that she had caught tuberculosis, so she hung herself from, uh, some people say from the elevator shaft, and some people say from the actual door frame of room 502, but it's supposed that she is in room 502. Um, there's on the, it's either the, I feel like it's the third floor, but it's either the third or fourth floor that they say there's this entity um, and it, it's called the Creeper, and it's like this shadow figure that either creeps, it like, it's like it crawls on the walls and on the ceiling, and everybody keeps calling it this evil entity, but I don't really think, I mean, I haven't been there, so I don't know, but I really feel like in a building like this with so much sadness, it's probably more of kind of like a protective energy that's trying to protect the spirits that are there um, from, you know, all these people coming in that are just treating this like it's no big deal. Like, oh man, we're going to this ghost hunt. And it's like, no, these are actual human spirits. These are human souls that are still here because that was where they lived. That is where they lived and died because of this, this disease. And so, you know, to go there and have no respect for that whatsoever. That's probably what that thing is. It's just all of this this energy built up into a thing to basically scare people. Um, and I mean, I, I hate when people go into a place and they're like, oh, this thing's evil. You don't know it's evil. I mean, in a place like that, yeah, there's some, there's some stuff that happened. I mean, they did... They did experiments on people because they couldn't figure out how to cure tuberculosis. So, like, they would go in and they would deflate people's lungs, to, like, the lung that had the tuberculosis in it. They would deflate it to see if maybe it would stop it spreading. They would, I mean, they would end up, people would end up with disfigured and with horrible scars. And most people didn't live through the experiments that they performed. So, it's not saying that there wasn't hurtful things that happened there, but I don't think that it was a place of evil. I mean... The staff was was so uh, helpful, and I mean, that was their home. So it just upsets me when people are like, oh, it's this place of ultimate evil. It's like, no, it's not. It's a place of extreme sadness. And for people that don't go there with the utmost respect, I hope the creeper gets your ass. Um, but anyway, so there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, Ghost Hunters have been there. Ghost Adventures has been there. Um, basically any big TV show that has to do with ghosts have been to Waverly. And Kevin and I are going. And uh, the closer, I can't believe it's already a week away, the closer it gets, the more I'm freaking out. Um, because I, I haven't done anything like this. I mean, I've done, we did the Perry Hotel, which for people that are still waiting for evidence on that, uh, we have it. I have it here, like there's all kinds of stuff we found, but I don't know how to get it uploaded onto YouTube or onto Facebook. Like I don't know how to get it in clips. So I didn't forget about you, I just don't know how to <laughs> how to upload it so that you can see just the clips and not upload the whole 30 minutes and be like, okay, at like 2 minutes and 46 seconds, listen for this. Okay, that's all that's in that clip because that's a waste. Um, but we'll figure it out. And for Waverly... And I can tell you this for certain. Um, we are going to um, be, I mean, I'm going to be recording as much as humanly possible. But I'm going to try to post videos uh, as I go, because I'm going to have my phone with me. 
So I'm going to try to take videos of like the building and maybe the daytime tour and I'm going to try to take pictures and upload pictures onto Facebook as well as upload like little videos. Maybe if I can like when Kevin and I are going alone so it's okay for us to talk. Um, like take videos with a flashlight and kind of show you guys the inside of the place and and so there you're gonna there's gonna be clips uh, they're not gonna be very long I'm guessing but I'm gonna try to upload clips as we go to YouTube um, so yeah I'm gonna try to keep you guys in in the know on this one I am so excited and so scared and so nervous and just like a whole jumble of emotions going on to know that this is only a week away because originally it was like six months away and I'm like that's oh, not a big deal and now I'm like holy shit <laughs> like the schedule that I'm making for next week uh, that is when I'm leaving that is my vacation time so uh, yeah that is what's going on I guess I didn't mean to make this 15 minute video but it is what it is um, so that is probably those are probably going to be the next videos that I post are going to be stuff from Waverly um, and that's what it is. So I hope you guys have a great day. Hope you guys have a great night. Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, and I will talk to you all on Facebook. I'm sure I'll talk to you on Facebook prior to, to us going, but you'll know, you'll know when we're going. I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'll, I'll keep you posted on, on the ride down and all kinds of stuff. And my mom is calling me, so I gotta go. You guys have a great day. Bye.